Hello again guys, I have a somewhat fun video for you today. I saw a deal on Best Buy site the other day for this phone. This is the Microsoft Lumia 640 from AT&T. Now the reason I say this is gonna be a fun video is not even so much about the device itself. I'm gonna show you a little bit of behind the scenes as to what tech YouTubers and just people in general who purchase these AT&T devices have to go through. So I've brought along with me a suite of tools that might be necessary to complete this task. We'll start here at the bottom. The bottom seems like a good place to start. Hey, that's actually working. So we do have an entry point. Can we get around the rest of it? Nope. That ain't happening. And the funny thing is, a lot of times people save the packaging on these devices for resale value, because having all the packaging means that people will know that all the documentation, all the cabling and everything's in there. AT&T devices, no such luck. Let's try this way. Well, that kind of worked. Hey, we're making progress. Little progress, but progress nonetheless. I'm underwhelmed. Apparently I'm not going to need all these extra implements. Scissors alone are working. Now the problem is the left-hand side. You almost need just a can opener. I'm super close. I've almost reached my purchase. And that'll actually do. Wow. That was about a million percent easier than I've ever done it before. And now we're just left with loads of jagged edges. So anyway, now that we've successfully mauled a package, this is the Microsoft Lumia 640. Throw this away. Don't need that, right? Lots of packaging, lots of materials, lots of things to make loud noises. Teeny tiny micro USB cable. I do mean teeny tiny. I've seen cables this small before, but usually they're included with USB chargers. This is like a six inch cable. This is not gonna be useful if you're plugging into the wall, which I suppose is why they also included this wall charger that's permanently attached. So you've got a data slash syncing cable and then your wall wart, which again is not one that's probably gonna be hugely useful. Because if you can see that, it says it outputs at 750 milliamps. Maybe that's all the device will take. You also get a bunch of AT&T open here, start here, look here first, quick start guide stuff. Phone feature guide, stuff about Windows, how to set it up, basic functions. Nobody reads those. Product safety information, that thing you get in case you steal the device, and the battery. We'll just take all this stuff. It's gone. Gone forever. Okay, so let's see if we can get the back off of this thing. Very nice that it has a removable back. Grab here at the top, pinch and pull. There you go. That wasn't too terrible. It does come with an AT&T SIM pre-installed, which I will not be using, so we'll take that out. Chuck it in the hole forever. All right, installing the battery. Actually, before we put it all back together, here's where your SIM will go. It takes a micro SIM. You've also got a micro SD card slot right there. You can see a big old rear-facing speaker. There we go, got it all back together. And it definitely feels a lot more hefty, a lot more solid in the hand now. Let's get all this plastic off of it. Oh, excuse you. There you go. There's your plastic, there's your Microsoft branding. Microsoft branding. And I'll be really honest, I'm not 100% on the specifications on this one. It has a 1280 by 720 display, which was significantly higher than the 520 series that I tried, and actually I think a lot higher than the 635. But it has more storage, it has a faster processor, more RAM. I think this has a gig of RAM and a quad-core processor, if I remember correct. And it comes running Windows 8.1 out of the box, and it's supposed to be upgradable to Windows 10 whenever it becomes available for this device. From what I read, it is supposedly already releasing in other parts of the world, so hopefully it is just a matter of time. Sim error, yeah, 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 except, except, except. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi, and there we go. Next, next, next. Let's get it all done. Checking reset protection state, that's an interesting one. How do you want to set things up? Recommended or custom? You know what, I'm just gonna take recommended. Probably not a phone I'm gonna be using as a daily driver. Go ahead and set the time zone. What is the date today? It's definitely not April 2015, sorry. There you go, much better. Keep your life in sync. No, we're not gonna do that right now. Reset protection? No, not really. And now we wait. I will say I'm a little disappointed I didn't get to break out the super rusty old handy cut shears that I got from my grandfather. Guess I'll have to go back to cutting my toenails with these. But without actually having gotten into the phone yet, just looking at the specs, looking at everything on paper, looking at the device itself, I paid 30 bucks for this at Best Buy. Regular retail price on it is 60 bucks. As a backup phone, these things are awesome. That's as far as I'm gonna go with it. As a primary device, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I've used Windows Phone in the past. The performance is always amazing. You can throw as many apps as you like at it and it's gonna be great. There are gonna be a few apps that are probably not gonna perform hugely well in, on the phones that have lower specs, like this one in particular. But the biggest problem that I've always had with Windows Phone is just the lack of apps. Which is funny that it's spending so much time sitting here on this installing app, setting up app screen, because there's not that many apps out there for it. But yeah, for the apps that it has, there's a lot of games for it. There's not a lot of top-end games, but there are a lot of games for it. There's a lot of third-party apps for first-party apps 
like third party replacements. There, like there's no official Instagram app, if I remember right. There's not an official Snapchat. There's not an official Face, maybe there's Facebook. I don't know, just a lot of the official apps that I would use are not there. A lot of the Google apps obviously are not there. All right, I'm back and actually it's a couple of days later. Not because I've been taking the time to actually review the device, but because I've been trying to recover the video. But that's a topic for another day. I have spent a little bit of time with the device and for 30 bucks I can say this is absolutely an amazing deal. But I've been told that it's 30 bucks for a reason because I believe it's actually being phased out. The next model of this device, the Lumia 650, is now being unveiled at Mobile World Congress. So it does kind of make sense for this one to be going the way of the Dodo. But that said, if you can still find one for 30 bucks, if you could still find one even for 60 bucks, it's not a bad option. Snapdragon 400 processor, eight gigs of storage, one gig of RAM, and an eight megapixel rear facing camera capable of doing 1080p video. The biggest limitation at this point is just the fact that it's Windows Phone and there's not a huge amount of apps for it. And in this case, it does come with a boatload of AT&T stuff pre-installed. I mean, literally the only thing I've installed on this phone at this point is Timelapse Pro and Microsoft's Hyperlapse mobile app because I just wanted to test out time lapses on this. And again, for 30 bucks, this is not a bad phone as a time-lapse device. But still, just to go ahead and throw it out there, if you can find it for 30 bucks and you're looking for a spare phone or you're looking for a phone for a child or for a senior citizen or, you know, a parent or whatever, 30 bucks is not a bad option. It feels very nice in the hand. At the end of the day, it is a Nokia device, so it is going to be very solid. It's a very nice step forward from the previous models, the 520, 521, 635 that I've tested out, and I think it gets the job done. So I'll put a link to where I found it over on Best Buy, if it is still available on there, or I'll put a link to Amazon or wherever else I can find it down in the description. Just just could not pass it up for the price. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to thumbs up this video if you like this video. If you want to see more Windows Phone content, let me know. Let me know if there's anything in particular I'm missing on Windows Phone. Subscribe to receive the rest of my videos when they become available, and we'll see you again next time. The S7 comes with a 5.1 inch display and a 3000 milliamp hour battery, where the S7 Edge has a 5.5 inch display and a 3600 milliamp hour battery, as well as a 100